Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and happy new year. Today I want to chat with you guys about matching into Durham without a research year. I've had a lot of people ask me these questions even though I have made videos which all pretty much give you advice. All my advice is to match without taking a research year. So I decided though to just make a straight video for it and also plug in the other videos where I do talk about um, how to match successfully in general that you guys could um, also take a look at. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, first off, my two videos that I really recommend anybody watch if they are trying to match any competitive specialty without a research year to check out how to excel in med school as well as how I matched her with a low step one score. Like those are really good videos to start off with. Um, also, we're going to be talking a lot about, obviously, research. But that's what everybody's stressed about. And this is the year, the research year is what, everyone, what you are trying to avoid. More likely, if you're trying to watch, if, you're, if you are watching this video, so definitely check out my video, How to Get Published. That um, also, should also be helpful as well. Get started in regards to tips. I have 10 great tips on how to match DERM without a research year. So the first tip is let your program director and program chair know who you are. It's crazy to me how many mentees tell me that their program chair or program director doesn't know who they are. You need the fullest support of your institute at your at your home institute. So make sure they know who you are as soon as you know that you want to do Durham or if you're thinking about Durham because you want to have a built a professional relationship with them by the time you are applying. So shadow them, do research with them, um, set up meetings to be in their office just to introduce yourself to them, tell them your interests and like your goals in life and just really try to do that periodically throughout your time in medical school. So they really know who you are and they really want to support you. The second tip is establish mentors, right? Ask yourself, what are you looking for in a mentor? How can they help you achieve the goals that you would like to achieve going forward? And uh, um, figure out who those people can help you out the best. I had and continue to still have a lot of mentors very well-rounded group. When I was in med school, I did not just have mentors in dermatology. I had mentors in different specialties as well, including family medicine and OB-GYN. Um, mentors could help shape you. But specifically for dermatology or any competitive specialty, you want mentors in that field as well. Uh, it doesn't really, if it, it, depending on what this mentor does in their free time or like how and how best they can help you, it depends on how you're going to build that relationship with them. So I don't know if it will be through community service, through global health, through uh, um, research, through shadowing in their clinic, whichever way it is, but make sure you're trying to build a relationship with these mentors and not just suddenly coming to them when you need letters of recs, okay? And one more thing, when it comes to, to the letter writers, just remember that you want a strong letter, letter of rec. Especially when you're working with a principal investigator, you want to have stood out on your research project. You always wanted to be the person who was helpful, who's always willing to try things out, who's always willing to help lead the team, who is always just willing and a team player and coming up with ideas. You want to be that person because everyone, people are going to notice that and would, would write that in your letter of rec. You want glowing letter of recs from everybody writing you a letter. So you want to build relationships with them such that they can write that kind of letter, right? So yeah, so that's that. And I do have a video on how to find a mentor in medicine. So make sure to check that out as well. Talk to talk to upper years about how they got research opportunities and who would be great mentors in the field that you're looking for. That's just really gonna be helpful, especially for people who do not have a Durham program at their institute. You wanna start reaching out to people who have gone through the process already, even recent graduates, and ask them like, who were, who was your mentor? Who did you reach out to? Who helped support your application? Be, don't be afraid to reach out to them. A lot of the times, um, former students or um, upper years are super excited to help people who are coming after them. My fourth tip, so with research, you want to first figure out who is the faculty getting out these projects and these research projects. Another thing, you want your you want your research to be impactful, unique, and published in well-respected journals. This is what's going to impress people when they're looking at your application. What I remember one of the articles that I wrote, one of the interviewers was like, "Oh my god, I just read one of your articles. It was such an impressive article." Like, 
those that's what you want so, okay so next is present the research everywhere so one project can end up being um repeated on your application for residency if you're presenting it in different places and different aspects so like one project i would have presented at several conferences big small and um local um throughout the country it doesn't matter but just present it it doesn't matter if it's oral if it's a um a poster presentation present 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 that's going to get your name out there when you are presenting you're actually going to be able to network you're going to meet other people um so it's just it just works out well in all those different aspects so make sure that whatever work you're presenting even if it's not it hasn't been published yet you can still present it um, as long as the PI is agreeable to it. And of course your PI has to know if you're, if you're going to present. Um, because that's, that's a whole process in itself because you have to like look for what conferences are taking in um, projects that could be presented. But as long as your PI is on board and everyone's on board, present anywhere that you can. Sixth tip is when you sit down with your principal and investigator, let them know what your goals are for this project or whatever project. If, they're, if you're in the midst of determining what projects you're gonna work with the prevent principal investigator on or if they already have a project in mind and they're sending you down to see like what how you best fit be honest let them know what your goals are let them know if you really want to be a first author let them know if you really are have a time constraint like you only have three months to, to, to be able to do it let them know if you only have one year especially if you're a third year um a medical student and you really are on a time crunch trying to get things out before you have to um start working on your residency applications let them know i was very honest i was like i just decided that i wanted to do zerm in my third year i really only have a few months to get a whole bunch of projects out like how can you help best support me do you have any projects that you think that could realistically be um published or at least submitted for publication by the time i am ready to apply for residency you have to be honest because then you don't want to be in a situation where the project ends up being a three-year project and really not in the timeline that works for you and you are sitting down to apply for residency programs and you have no actual things to talk about and don't get me wrong now you could be working on a project for three years and uh, it not be finished and put it on your application but you want to have known that that was going to happen or had a realistic expectation and that you had other projects working behind that. You didn't want that to be your end all be all. So you want to be working on, be able to work on several projects. Research a lot of the times can take much longer than you expected. I did work on a project that ended up taking, it was supposed to be within one month and I don't know what happened. It ended up taking a year, but it was a very impactful article. So, you know, you want to, to sit with your principal investigator and at least realistically tell them your goals. And of course, check out my, my one of my more recent videos, Research Don'ts, because you don't want to, you know, burn any bridges while in medical school or really ever, but really not in medical school while you're trying to get into um, dermatology. So make sure you check out that video. So tip number seven, I feel like recently I've talked to a lot of people who are so gung-ho about research that they're not focusing on all the other aspects of their application specifically when it comes to leadership, like your application needs to really, really stand out. Part of an organization or a leadership role, like how does that, how do I learn more for, about you or who you are from that role? So I was like the president of the Student National Medical Association. Then I also, um, which is an organization which helps with the upliftment of minorities in medicine. And it's just like a really amazing program. I helped reestablish it on my institute. I was also part of the regional board. I also like implemented a lot of different um, events at my school based from that organization, such as um, the Black History Month ban Banquet. I did a, I helped form a mentorship of a program between us and an undergrad um, to help help with a pipeline for minority undergrad students to have a support system of, for, of people who can help mentor them into getting to medical school. So that was just one of my leadership roles. I also helped to form, I also helped form the Interprofessional Student Organization, which was an organization which helped to really help medical students and other health health professional students such as nurses learn how to work together and then they actually worked um with a, com a a member of the community who was considered underserved and helped them with like with a health goal so if it was like to lose weight to uh, um help control their diabetes and then they all work together so and then i actually did research projects on both, both the stuff i did with the snma and the organization that i helped to, to create 
that was just a link too. Um, another thing that I did, I was part of Global Health. With Global Health, we you go in your first and in your fourth year of medical school. In your first year, you are, um, in your first year, you go there just to do research. So I did a huge research project where we looked at micronutrient deficiencies in children under five, and we wrote up a, a manuscript. Um, it was a lot, like I actually never pr published it, but we presented it to the health administrative administration in Ghana. And then our fourth year, we went back. And, and when we went back, it was more for us to be able to like work in the hospital. Um, I worked in Durham. I, well, not worked, but like shadowed in Durham. That was the three thing. That was at least three things. I actually had a lot of other things that I did. I was really, really busy in medical school. But what I'm trying to show you is that a lot of people are so fixated on their research. It's like, because people are going to be impressed by uh, outside of just research. Uh, my interviews, I talked so much about my leadership roles and people were just like really intrigued by them. And, you know, they, it helped to tell who I was as a person about what made me passionate about what was I interested in. Of course, another thing that I did was that I volunteered at our free um, health clinic at my medical school. I volunteered for the derm days where they, they were a dermatology attending and resident will go in and uh, um, to see, we'll see patients all together. So the residents got to know me and the, the attending that day will get to know me as well. And because I went on a frequent basis, I became like a regular, so they knew me a lot. And I did that within the last year, like my third year before applying to residency. But the thing is that a lot of people weren't doing that. A lot of people were interested in derm and like not even shadowing in the health clinic so it's just like you can find the ways to make yourself stand out you just have to one be passionate about it or really interested in it and then just being committed to doing it I really just want you guys to remember that your application is way more than just research and the more you and a lot if, and if you're able to get a lot of that stuff in your application is an all-rounded it's something that's all-rounded so even if you're lacking a little bit in the research area all those other things could help you know, help balance everything out. And then this goes into my eighth tip. Don't forget about all the other things, such as like your grades. You need to have good grades to get into Derm. Um, you want to be making sure you're passing your classes, you're getting good step scores. I know step one's going into pass fail, but then there's also step two. So you want to be trying to get honors. You want to have like all the good grades. You want to, um, if you get any scholarships, anything like that to put onto your CV. My ninth tip is, I kind of said it already, quality over quantity. Um, like I said, everyone is always asking me like, oh, how many numbers did you have when you um, apply, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like I tell them, but it's just like my application was so much more. And we need to stop fixating on like those kind of numbers and just fixate on like, how can I make myself a great doctor? And I think that was my mindset in general. I also was more focused on how I could be a great doctor and like how the things I essentially thought about how the things I did would help me become the best I can be. And that's how my application came out as because that's those were the things that I um, decided to do. Um, and then just last is authenticity. And I feel like that's what I've been seeing in the past few tips is just figuring out who you want to be and going after those things, being committed to those things. So authenticity goes not just about how your application looks of where it tells a whole well-rounded story about who you are, what you're interested in, what you're passionate, bit, passionate about. But you also want to uh, be authentic in, when I told you go to go meet your program director and to go meet your chair and to go meet your principal investigator and just be honest and let them know who you are and get to let them get to know you as a person. That's what I mean by authenticity. You, you know, people just want to have future colleagues that they're going to like, that they feel like they can trust, they, who they feel like they can work with. And that's who you want to come off as a person. Um, they want to be able to know that you're a, t a team player. So, you know, you always want to make sure that you are just coming off as your true authentic self. Um, I think that's really the key part to like wrap this whole thing up is really your authenticity just coming off as a genuine hardworking student who's really trying their best to become the best dermatologist they can. People will see that and, and, and you just need to believe that. You need to believe it in yourself and other people are going to believe it as well. So let me know if this was helpful. This video ended up taking much longer than I thought. I thought it would be so much shorter because I did talk about a lot of these things in other videos. But hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what was the most helpful, what you didn't realize that you needed to do, if you have any questions. Whatever it is, let me know. You know, I'm always here to chat with you guys. Love helping you guys out. And hope to see you at my next video. Bye.